Hey Canucks fans, tonight it'll be Thatcher Demko and Net as the Canucks look to extend their two-game winning streak. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. It's my Canucks take all in one take, it's Clay's Canucks commentary for Thursday, April the 22nd. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. I want to give a shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Just Incredible, Nux fan number 29, Lucas Gates, Chris S, and Adam Broomfield. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks to the support of all, all members of all levels. You are listed in my video description. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, simply press the join button underneath this or any of my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Tonight, post game, we're going to start at, uh, we're going to aim for 10.15. 10 o'clock if the game ends early, but I think we're going to go 10.15 just gives me a bit of breathing room. So we'll go 10.15 until 11 o'clock tonight. I hope you join me then. Uh, Vancouver and Ottawa, of course, which I'll talk about in a second. And then I um, also want to give a shout out to, once again, to Elijah, Raf, and Josh of the Stick and Rink podcast. They posted the links today. It was pretty funny. Uh, we recorded this on Monday night, Sunday night. They released it Monday. And it was a really, really fun show. And actually, um, I thought I did well. And we had a, I had a good time with them. But I think the funniest part was actually the two minutes after I had left to do my own live stream, where they're kind of talking about me. They said I was relentless in my pursuit of happiness. They were wondering what my outlets were to let out my anger. Was I a Brazi uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu master? Or did I have a smash therapy room at home? So check it out. It's pretty darn funny. So once again, Elijah, Raf, and Josh, thanks for having me on with you. Stick and Ring Podcast. Give them some love. Okay, tonight, Thatcher Demko makes his first start in almost a month. He played in the Canucks final game before the break, March 24th, and now it's April 22nd. So almost an entire month between starts for Demko, who takes the net from Holtby after Holtby took two games from Toronto. And this this move makes a lot of sense to me. Demko is healthy. You want to get him in right away and uh, not let him spend even any more time on the sidelines. You want to give a Hopi a bit of a break. Yes, it's been uh, not back-to-backs. So there's been a, a night between or a day between each game. But those were two tough games. They weren't pedestrian games for Hopi. Those were two tough games after coming off of COVID. So why not give Hopi a break as well and be happy that he it looks like he's regained some of his old form, at least a form that we haven't seen yet for in the in the season for the Canucks. So uh, grateful for Hopi's performance, but it makes sense that you got to establish Demko again and make sure that he doesn't sit too long. So it will be Demko against the Ottawa Senators tonight. On the blue line, the same six. So you have Hughes and Hamannick. You have Schmidt and Myers, and you have Ole Olevi, who, as you know, I thought played really well on Tuesday night and Jalen Chatfield. So the same six there. Alex Edler still has one more game to serve in his suspension. Then when he comes back, you, you presume he comes in for um, for Ulevi, or you keep Ulevi in and you put you flip Schmidt to the right side. So we'll see what happens there. So same six forwards, uh, same six D as, as Tuesday night. The forwards, it uh, gets a little more interesting, and it's also the one group of players that... Uh, Travis Green did not confirm in his media availability. But if they play the way they practice, and I, I've always said Travis Green likes to do that, unless he was experimenting, but I'm not sure if you want to be experimenting this time of the season. They practice like this. You have the big line of Horvat with Hoglander and Pearson. And then the second line of Miller, Besser, and Matthew Hymore. Matthew Hymore, who had 16 minutes in his Canucks debut on Tuesday night, showed enough on that third, fourth line you know, audition that he's getting a chance, at least at practice, he was skating alongside Miller and Besser. Now, this could be where experimentation comes in. Maybe Travis Green just wanted to see where he looks like. And when he starts the game, he could flip Highmore for VC. So VC is skating on the third line, the double Vs with Travis Boyd in the middle. So Boyd between VC and Vertanen, that's usually a spot that Travis Miller, uh, that Travis Miller, that JT Miller was in between Vertanen and VC, but we'll see uh, Travis Boyd in that spot basically by Vertanen and, and VC getting bumped down by by Pearson, uh, uh, returning Pearson and Matthew Heimard. Then your fourth line, you have Brandon Sutter between Jace Harlock, who is noticeable on Tuesday night, and Mark Michaelis. So that's because Antoine Roussel is out. Now, Antoine Roussel looks like it's going to be out for at least two weeks. That's the early word, so not that bad, all things considered. But uh, Tyler Mott was not ready to get come back today, which he seemed to be the natural replacement and probably the best of all our options, but still not ready. So it's Mark Michaelis that draws in ahead of McEwen, 
of Ericsson of Grayback. He's obviously the fastest of all those skaters. And I know that Travis Green really right now values speed on his bottom six because in guys like Boyd and Vertanen and, um, and Harlock and, and uh, I guess, who was I just talking about? I just had a brain fart. Oh, Michaelis, you have guys that, you know, they're not like world beaters when it comes to speed, but they can skate. They can skate a lot faster than, say, the Gravac, the Ericsson, the McEwens, and even the Roussels, uh, Beagles of the world. So we'll see how that bottom six lines up. So once again, Horvat, Hoglander, Pearson, Miller, Besser, Highmore, at least that's how they practice, Boyd, BC Vertanen, Sutter, Michaelis, and Harluck. A couple other things that came from the meat availability. They talked about uh, Elias Pedersen. And um, we all know it's a wrist injury. We don't know the severity. I have a friend who has some contacts within the team who I spoke to last night. He gave me some a bit of intel. I, I can't really share it here. Nothing that surprises me, but it it for me it casts a bit of uh, the uncertainty as to when Pedersen is going to return. But Travis Green said that he's still working on his own, working out on his own, and he's working towards the return. So. I'll just say I, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I'm not trying to cause anything goofy or trying to clickbait anyone because I'm not going to put this in the title. But but all to say that, uh, um, you know, obviously we know it's a if it's a wrist injury, it seems pretty serious given that he hasn't played for the last little while since the start of February, I guess. No, start of March? Start of February. No. I can't remember. No, it must be March. It must be March because they're they're, they're nine three and one in Patterson's absence. That's thirteen games. That means two. Yeah, start of March two since the coming back in the eleven before they left. Now, obviously, you still want your best player in the lineup, but for the Canucks to be doing all this um, nine three and one without PD, including two wins over Toronto, that's pretty uh, pretty darn impressive. So there's that to look out for as well. Is the the hopefully the return of Pedersen. Uh, sometime before the end of the season, especially as the Canucks, believe it or not, I'm so happy we're saying it, are in almost a playoff race, a quasi-playoff race. They still got to do their part. In, and now they're 10 points behind Montreal. Montreal beat Edmonton last night, but 10 points behind, but with five games in hand. And then you, whether you think of those five games are going to be after Montreal season's done, technically that's so they'll play even up until then uh, or um yeah you can look at it that way but you can also look at the Canucks if they can get three or four wins of the next four against Ottawa then that puts them right neck and neck with Montreal which would make for an exciting last three weeks of the season so a lot of things to think about I'm gonna come off of my 4-2 victory uh prediction for the Canucks because I think the Canucks are gonna come up big um I don't think there's a trap game because it's there's four of them in a row against Ottawa, so it's not even a trap series. Canucks can't afford to have a trap series and take them lightly. So let's go 5-2. I'm going to go 5-2 Vancouver, and that's my score prediction. I would love to know your score prediction. Put it in the comments down below, um, and let me know what else you think about the Demko starting, if that makes sense to you. It does to me. Anything else you want to talk about in tonight's game, what you're going to be looking out for. Leave a comment below. I will read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member of this channel if you'd like to. And stay tuned on my Twitter, uh, my YouTube and Twitter accounts tonight. Because if weather is good, I think um, I'm going to uh, challenge Jacob to a rematch in ping pong. And we'll live stream that during the first intermission while it's the sun is still out. So look for that later tonight. And then, of course, my post-game live stream, 10.15 on YouTube tonight. I hope to see you there. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless. And go Canucks go.